how many people here have used it or have heard of it? And how many people have heard of the certificate module? So who knew that they were two different things? All right. And who didn't? So what I'm going to discuss is um, the history behind the certificate module and um, why a new one was created. Anyway, what's, I'll go to the next slide. So what is the custom certificate module? Um, basically, as the name implies, it provides a certificate to students. Um, it's an activity that you add to a course. And when downloaded, it generates a PDF. And people can use this to, as a way to say, hey, this person's certified at XYZ. Um, now, when I started um, at Moodle, that was 1.9, um, I started as a Moodle developer, there was a certificate plugin. Um, I didn't initially write it. I just took over and started maintaining it. Um, and I maintained it up to three point something. And I think it still works with the latest version. I just don't pay that much attention to it, to be honest. Um, now, this had some flaws. Um, the biggest flaw was that it required technical knowledge to actually customize it. So you would need a PHP developer. You would need access to the server. And you'd have to go in to create your own t certificate type and then edit it and place the text using PHP. And I don't know how many people here know how, how many programmers do we have, uh, besides the middle hedge key guys, obviously. but. Um, yeah, so obviously not many, and um, a lot of site administrators aren't going to give FTP access to teachers because that's going to be a disaster. So usually, no offense to anyone here, but yeah, usually that's not a good idea. So I went away from that and I created the uh, custom certificate. Now why are there two? Because um, in Moodle we have an upgrade process, and you can upgrade and improve a plugin. Um, the reason this was not possible is because people could create their own certificate type and they would have a lot of their own custom code in there and there was no way for me to get, go through that code and put it into a database. There's no, I couldn't interpret the logic that they would have put it because they could have put in anything. So I decided to create a custom certificate and the advantage of the custom certificate is that you can drag and drop elements around. So rather than having to go in and do any PHP programming, you can simply use the browser or the web interface and drag the elements. And I'll go through how that's done. Um, this is just basically where, where, if you guys were interested in trying it out after this talk, um, you can find it on the plugins database. Just look for custom certificate. It's maintained by some dude called Mark Nelson. And uh, that's also the same one for, there is also a certificate, so don't get confused. There is also, that is also on there. Um, for the tech savvy, um, it's publicly available on my GitHub. Um, so feel free to fork it, do whatever you want to it, and you know push a patch. Um, that'd be much appreciated. Um, here's a documentation link. I'm just going to go through this quickly, so you're probably not going to memorize that, but just look up custom certificate module documentation. You should find that page. Um, all right, so I'm just going to go through basically how you would go about using this effectively. Um, so as you, you install the plugin, um, you'll create a site template, which I'll go into and describe later. Um, you file a bug report, because there probably will be some that you'll notice. Um, wait for a fix. And you know that will take a while because I do this in my spare time, so you know I'm not always working on it straight away. So that's why I'd appreciate it if someone would, uh, you know, if they do find a problem with it, submit their own patch, and then I could integrate it. Um, and then you would tell the teachers to use the site template, and then teachers, if they want, can further customize it. Um, so I'm, next slide is just showing you the global settings. Um, this first setting, here, the top one, that says allow verification of all certificates. Now what this means is if this is enabled, anyone can go to one single page 
because um, it used to be that you would have to go to, you would have to know the URL for a specific certificate to verify it. Now this allows a person to go to a single page and verify any certificate on the site. Um, this is useful because because you might have a non Moodle user wanting to verify that a certificate is correct. So if someone a student has achieved uh, has acquired a certificate and they've got a they've got a code and they've given it to an an employer or someone in an interview, you want that person to be able to verify that, hey, yes, this is valid. Um, the show position X and Y is kind of a legacy thing, but that's if, with the drag and drop interface, it's also possible if you want to get really exact, you can put in, you can actually specify the X and Y locations. And I'll go into further detail later on how that works. Um, so there's more settings on that page. They just pretty much, you set up the default values. So when someone adds a custom certificate, to their site, these are the default values that will be set up. So you might want, when teachers are creating a site, you, want to, you might want to make sure that every time they do add it and they blindly click to add it, that email students is set to yes. Um, or maybe you want it set to no. Um, the verif verification process is every certificate, there's a code. Um, you can choose to have this code displayed on the certificate. Um, or not, but if you do have it displayed and someone provides you with a certificate, then and a person can come into your site and they can visit this page. When they click that link, they'll get a text area, they put in the uh, verification code, and then it'll say, um, yeah, okay, this person is verified. Um, or not, you know, if they, the code doesn't work out. Um, the next page for uploading, you can upload images, so this is where if you want to create a site template to use throughout your site, um, you would add some images, and I've chosen in this case just to add a background and an emblem. So that could be your school logo, or it could be um, anything you want, your uh, work environments logo. Um, so once you've done that, I've go th you've, you've, now you've added your images, um, you want to go through and manage the templates. So you click on the manage templates, and this is the template that's gonna be used site-wide that you want your teachers to use. Um, so what I've gone is just basically I've called it a site template. Um, what you'll notice here, where it says uh, background image um, and add element, um, there's basically a list of elements that you can add to the certificate. Um, these are as follows. I won't go through all of them, but some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Um, so you need the student's name, the grade, the name of the grade item, uh, the name of the category the course is in, just some random text you want, a user field. And these are kind of ones, the, 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 the way that this was built is these are actually sub-plugins. So if you have a developer at your institute, they can easily add in their own um, different element that achieves what you would want to do. Um, so once you've done that, so what I've done is I'm going to add a background image. Now once I've added the background image, you can see that I've, the images that I uploaded before are now available. So I've, I'll just, all I simply choose is in the image drop down that I want to use the uh, background and I click save changes. This takes you back to the template page. Now you can see here that the element has now been added. So I've got a background image associated with this template. Now I want to go ahead and add another one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just an image. So the background image will take the whole space of the PDF. Um, if you want an image, like a logo, that's where you would choose the image in the, image in the drop down to add. Um, and in this case, I will just choose the emblem. Um, that, you go ahead, save that, and then you go to the next page, and you can see now I have a background image and a normal image attached to this. I'm just gonna add one more final thing just to show you that not everything is simply just images. So with the student name, when you go through, so the, uh, the problem with the old certificate plugin, if you wanted to change the color of the text or the size, this is where you would have to go back into changing, you'd have to need know someone with PHP knowledge to go in and actually edit, change the size, put in the color they want, and you know not many people uh, have that skill set. Uh, nor would you expect them to. So here I've got the student name, and you can choose what fonts you want to use. Um, these are fonts that 
come pre-installed with Moodle, but you can also add your own. Um, and if you add your own, they'll just show up in that drop-down. You select the size, and you've also got this nice color picker where you can actually go, okay, I want it to look like this color. Um, so I've got an add of that. Um, now, so here you can see the template. I've got those three things I added, the background image, the image, and the student name. Now what? Like, okay, so how do I make, get this to look nice? Um, you can see that there's this uh, reposition elements link. Once you click on that, that will take you to a page where you can see the elements that you've added. The cool thing about this page is you can simply drag and drop wherever you want those to be displayed. Um, so this gets rid of the hassle of having to get someone tech savvy involved to customize this for you. Um, you can also, on this page, click on an element and a modal will pop up and you can edit. So if you decide, hey, that font, ac ac that size of that font isn't actually, it's not big enough now that I can see it on that page, um, you can go here, just click change it. So you can do all your, without going back and forth and without losing flow, um, you can remain on the same page and do all your customization and get it to how, the, your desired um, appearance. Uh, now I'm just going to go through how, now how would a teacher use this site template. So you, as you as the site administrator, you've created this site template. Um, the teacher basically goes into a course. You guys are probably all familiar with this. Basically you go down and choose an activity to add to a course. Um, you'll see that the custom certificate is listed there. Um, you add this, you just basically add this plugin and you go to this page. This is kind of like a standard page. For most modules, I've kind of cut it down so you can't see the name in the description, but that's not, ther that's not critical to this demonstration. Basically, the options here are you can choose to email students, um, teachers, others. Now, the email students functionality, what that does, um, you, might, you might have students who aren't that active in the course, who don't go and visit the course and click on it to act act actively download the certificate. So what you want to do is issue it to them um, and you want this done automatically. So you, if you have this set, whenever the cron task runs in Moodle, it will check if there's any students who should be issued the certificate and then issue them and send them that via email. Um, it also has the common functionality um, that other modules share, so you can restrict access. So you can say, hey, this certificate's only available if you get 50% in quiz 101. Um, and the same thing with activity completion. So they've gone through and they've set this how they want, um, and they go to the next screen. Oh, there's the, there, are, there are other features on uh, other settings that I haven't mentioned, but uh, so you can set that you want the student to, you know, you don't want the student to get the presentation as soon as they go to the course. You want them to have at least browsed around and done a few things, but maybe there's no grade attached to it, so you can set the required minutes uh, students should spend in the course before that certificate will be available to them. Um, and then you can set the protection that you want for the PDF. So you can say, okay, I don't want people modifying this PDF. I don't want them to print it. I don't know why you do that, but it's an option. And I don't want them to be able to copy it. Um, so they've gone through and they've set that. Now, once they've added that to their course, they can then go to another page to edit the certificate. And it's gonna go back to a similar page that I was showing before um, where I was adding a site template. Um, here you can see you can have a list of elements to add, but in the, if you notice at the bottom part of the page, there's a load template heading, um, and you see that there, there's the site template. In this case, I'm also the administrator, so I see a manage templates link as well, and I can go to that link and add more templates if I wish. But from a teacher perspective, they wouldn't, a normal teacher, just on a course, they wouldn't see that link. And they go, okay, well, there's a template already available that the administrator or the manager of the course has created that I want to load. So they simply click on the load and they have exactly the same certificate. So this allows you to tell your staff that, hey, we, have, we want the certificate to look this way. When you go and add it to a course, please just load this template. And then, then they have the ability to add more to it if they want to add a... Uh, uh, another element, such as a great item name. Um, there's a few more features. That's the, the, the gist of it, but there's a uh, few more features. So, for example, you can see a report of all the people who have been issued the certificate. So, here you can see Mark Nelson. It's not actually a photo of me, but 
uh, I think that's yeah, just a random stock photo, but you can see all the different students that have been listed, and you can filter by that, and then you can download the data, the, the data as you would with a normal Moodle table. Um, um, you can also delete it, so if you can say, okay, this person actually didn't deserve the certificate, they cheated, you can delete the certificate that was issued to them, and the verification code that they give to people will no longer work. Uh, you can also download a copy of the certificate so you can see what it would look like for that student. Um, another feature is uh, for users. So users can go to their profile page, and a user might be a, a student of many courses, and they might have received many certificates, and you don't want them going between all the courses to try find them if they want to re-download them. So th this basically, if you look in, under the miscellaneous section on this page, um, you can see there's a My Certificates link. A student can click on that, and they'll just get a report of all the certificates that have been issued to them uh, throughout the site. So it's all kept in one location. Um, a new thing that I've added recently is actually mobile support, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's limited. You can't design how a, a certificate looks, but you can go through. Uh, you can, so this is from a, a, a teacher's perspective. They can go through, view the list of certificates that have been issued in the course, and delete it from using the mobile app. So if they wanted to do that quickly, or they can download it and see what the certificate looks like for that student. Um, and a student can go in and go to the course, and they can visit and get a copy of the certificate themselves and see when it was awarded. So it allows them to just use their mobile phone rather than going to the Moodle site and getting a copy just like that. Um, and that pretty much sums it up. And I think it's, um, I don't know how, how long I've been, but I think it's question time now. Still, is there enough time for questions or? Thank you, awesome. Yep.